se llama Jamie Price y nos va a obsequiar con una conferencia que lleva por título Comunicación cósmica, lenguaje ligero y la evolución. Recibamos con un fuerte aplauso a Jamie Price. Muchas gracias, buenos días. Estoy tan excitada y encantada de estar aquí. Por Since la I arrived, I've had some half-life flashes. Some good, some not. <laughs> I had one very quickly where I was seeing myself. ¿Lo puedes poner? Sí. Merci. Oh. Ah, sí. Later. Okay. I had one very quickly where I was seeing myself fall down some stairs. And I thought, oh, wow, those are beautiful stairs. <laughs> very... Very gorgeous architecture here, so it's nice to be in this energy. One of the things that I was shown before I came to Barcelona was that there is a lot of salt water that flows under the city, and because of that, it naturally draws a lot of emotion. And so when you're in Barcelona, you are processing some of the emotion in a stronger way for humanity. So thank you to those of you that live here for your beautiful service of helping just by being you. So what I want to talk about today is a very exciting part of our evolution. And um, it is something that many of you may have heard of before and even started experiencing. Is there anyone that has already started experiencing light language? Yes. Yes, quite a few of you. And I know you've had some presentations about it before. So it is something that indicates part of this evolution that we are going through that I call ascension, which ultimately is a very natural process for us. We are changing. Evolution is constant in the physical realm we are always moving through time. And this process of ascension that we are going through is opening us to a very exciting, conscious connection with the subtle realm. The subtle realm has always been there. We've always been interacting with it. Now we are starting to consciously interact with it and have much more of an impact on our creation. And light language is a really exciting part of that. So I want to talk to you first a little bit of technical information about what light language is. And then, of course, I'm going to do some light language so that you get to experience it and notice what you're sensing. And then we're going to talk about what it's indicating for humanity and why it's starting to open up so much right now. So light language is just a unique form of channeling. We are all channels. If you are alive, you are receiving and emitting information. That is a form of channeling. So ultimately, to channel light language, is just a matter of attuning to the frequencies of light language. It is a unique form of communication because rather than being linear, or memorized, it is a much more subtle form of communication. It's non-linear. We all have a non-linear aspect. And so as we attune more into that conscious connection with the subtle realm, we are starting to attune to more of our subtle energies. Our subtle bridge, our thoughts, and our emotions, That is how we start to tune in to the light language. So as we begin to attune to more of our love, that is how we open up to more of the light language. Now, as a unique form of channeling, there are two types of light language. The first is xenoglossia. Light language is just a form of language that's unknown to the channeler. So xenoglossia is someone being able to channel a language that they do not know, but it is a language that's known on Earth. For example, 
I've been told that I've channeled a phrase in Hebrew from someone that sp speaks Hebrew. I've been told I channeled a phrase in Japanese from someone that speaks Japanese. So this is a language that's unknown to the channeler, but is a language that's known on Earth. So in order for me to do that, I have to use a different part of my brain because my brain will naturally tell me, I don't understand. But there's something within me that is able to understand if I can open up to that conscious connection more. There's another form of light language, glossolalia. Glossolalia is unknown to the channeler, and it's also a language that is unknown on Earth. So this is the type of light language that I channel most. And there are many different forms of glossolalia. So glossolalia can be angelic in origin. Those that channel angelic energies generally like to sing. The light language tends to be more emotional. It's more focused on healing and connecting humanity because that is what the angels like to do. They like to heal and connect and nurture. So you can connect with angelic light language. Some light language is galactic in nature. Of course, this is what drew you here, your deep understanding that there are many species that are supporting us, some that are not, but that's okay. Everything always helps us to grow. And the galactic light language can be from many different species. And because this is nonlinear language, it can also be from different timelines. So for example, if you look at our own languages, they have changed a lot through time. So someone that's channeling galactic light language may access something that is from an earlier Pleiadian time, or a current Pleiadian language, or even a future Pleiadian language. And you're going to access languages that are attuned to your frequency, or attuned to the frequency of what's coming forward with the language. Of course, light language could also be elemental in nature. The fairies, the elven, many other elemental species they love to communicate with us. They've been doing this for many years, helping us to integrate here on Earth. The fairy languages are very joyful. They are so much fun to transmit. Sometimes a little embarrassing. <laughs> they, they get so playful, it can be a little weird for something that's already pretty weird. Also, the elemental, the elven is very common. Many of you may have seen the Lord of the Rings movies and why these became such a huge phenomenon because we are very connected into that energy. And I believe that even when Tolkien was receiving those stories and creating those languages, which he did very logically, he was tapping in like every artist does into a form of channeling where it really is about remembering a deeper connection. Now, of course, the light language could also be an earth-based language, but something that is so ancient or so future-based that we don't have a reference for it. Because that would be glossolalia, a language that is unknown to the channeler and unknown on earth. So for example, a Lemurian language or an Atlantean language. We don't have conscious recollection and conscious connection to those languages yet. Or it could be a future language. Those of you that are familiar with the Esasani, for example, that they are a future human experience. So you can tap into those languages with the language of light. <laughs> Now, of course, it can be spoken, which is what I'll do for you later. We can also sing it. 
Sometimes that happens, but I'm not naturally a singer, and I've used the galactic languages a lot, so they tend to speak more than sing. The galactics are very business-oriented. They're like, just more, more, more. You can do this. You got it. So uh, it can also be signed. You'll also see me signing some light language for you. And of course, it can be written as well. This particular transmission is a Lyran Pleiadian transmission that helps to open the third eye. So light language is just a form of divine communication. And we are all divine in nature, spiritual beings having a human experience. It is a very heart-centered language because this ascension that we are going through, it is about expanding our connection. And it is love that connects. It is that natural impulse that we all have to connect and expand. And that is what light language is helping us to do. Perhaps you're familiar with the story from the Bible of the Tower of Babel, where the languages were separated throughout humanity and they were dispersed. So we had a natural connection that even our older texts reference that there was a time of separation. And now we're in a time of reconnecting. We're in a time of discovering our own divinity in a deeper way and embodying that here on Earth as we connect more, as we connect with our galactic nature. And of course, this also means that some of these structures that used to separate us have to fall. And that's not always an easy process to experience or to watch. But when you connect in with your love, you get to see the perspective. Your third eye opens, your heart opens, and you create that heart-mind unity within yourself that sees the positive potentials in every experience. And that is what light language is helping to bring us to more connection, more of a heart-centered experience of the world. Light language is a form of higher self-communication. This physical aspect of us, it is 1% of all that we are. We have 99% invisible aspect that is, one term is the higher self. So it is the part of you that has remained in subtle form. It is the part of you that is still connected into your unified nature, the oneness. And so all our ascension is about is becoming more attuned with that higher frequency that love is the bridge to connect. So light language is a form of higher self-communication. And your higher self is communicating with you constantly. In fact, it is so natural that it is easy to feel like I'm not connecting with my higher self directly. I'm not hearing it. But you can't help it because you are it. So most often, you're going to get your higher self impulses through your subtle bridge, your thoughts and your emotions. Light language is a very direct form of communication from the higher self. And as we embody that more, we become more consciously connected with the subtle realm, that huge engine that creates form. So that connection becomes very natural to us. And light language is one of those bridges. The reason that it is coming stronger now is because we are shifting from mental focus into heart-centered focus. So light language 
bypasses some of those mental limitations and helps connect us more directly with the heart. So that part of my linear mind that says, I don't understand you. My heart says, I understand you fully. And that is what light language is helping us to connect. Bypassing that mental limitation and using our engine of connection. Now this beautiful mind, it is perfect as it is, it is meant to linearize, it is meant to categorize and define things so that we can choose. But that heart brings in a vast amount of information. It is where we are timeless. It is where we are completely courageous. And that's what we're moving into. That's why I was shown before I came to Barcelona the salt water that runs underneath here. Because what that was indicating is that it is very natural to have a lot of feeling here. It is very natural to have a lot of emotional courage. And it takes emotional courage to observe what's going on with humanity and hold that space of love. That's what we're doing now. Through the challenges, we are seeing the positive potentials. We are embodying those potentials and helping to create that. And light language is one of those bridges that helps move us past, I don't understand, into that heart connection that says, I do understand. I may not have direct words for it, but I understand and I have the courage to connect. That's what creates the change. That heart-centered communication that will allow you to bypass those mental limitations and connect with life, with others, with your own courage and your own discernment. So it's a really exciting part of our evolution. Now, what light language does, it, it is very naturally a powerful healing modality because it is love that always heals. So when you interact with light language, your higher self will be utilizing those encodements for you to release or for you to activate whatever is most appropriate in your journey. So it's a powerful healing modality because you're using that 99% aspect of you that is timeless, infinite, and completely courageous in love. So some of the different things that it does, it helps release vibrational discord and blockages. It's going to naturally activate your DNA because every time you make a choice for improvement, you shift your DNA. One moment of forgiveness starts to release any discord and opens you up to more of the natural capabilities that are built into this engine. You've heard we only use about five to 10% of our brain. Well, light language helps open up more of that capability, activating your pineal gland, helping you to see the potentials that may not be obvious in the moment, helping you to see the potentials that may not even be obvious within you yet. But you start to open to that very naturally because light language helps that wisdom unfold from within you. Very strongly, it helps bring emotional and mental healing. We usually see those first because they are your subtle bridge. And that subtle realm is very malleable. So that's generally where you transform first. And yet it can also bring about physical healing because that huge subtle engine creates your form. So that mental and emotional healing is very important even for your physicality. 
Often it brings about life changes that just unfold from within you. And of course, as you start communicating in nonlinear ways, you start accessing higher dimensional information and you begin anchoring that here. It becomes part of you. Now, of course, in this audience, you are all here because you already know there is more to life than this physical form. There are many species that we are interacting with in different ways. And yet all of this is about the human evolution so that what becomes natural to us is an easier progress, more connection, where we start abiding with the laws of nature that help us move through change much more quickly and easily. Light language is gonna open our telepathic channels. Now I use that term a little more broadly than most, not just a thought to a thought, but broad communication understood in different ways. So as you'll see, when I do light language, I'll talk to you about how to recognize some of those different telepathic ways that you communicate. And of course, what I love about it is it accelerates our ascension. It helps us really open to our multidimensional nature. It helps us communicate with life and anchor in deep understanding. Because rather than learning with linear, memorized words, we are downloading a vast amount of information and then unfolding that within our own wisdom. So we start to recognize that we have so much available to us, that this biomechanism has been created to evolve, and that part of this evolution that we are experiencing is a multidimensional communication that helps us connect and expand rapidly. So it's a very exciting part of our evolution and it's been here with us since our beginning. So there are a lot of ancient connections that we have with light language. Of course, every shamanic culture that I've found has a reference for light language. It's in the Bible, it's in the Quran, it's in all of the religious texts and even ancient cultures that have just a word for it, that as you allow that divine communication, they recognize that this is part of the healing journey, part of something that every shaman can do. The religious context, I spoke to you briefly of the Tower of Babel, that reference that we had a connective language and then were dispersed out that the linearization of our learning no longer had that broader connection to it. In the, uh, in the United States, we call it speaking in tongues, and it is something that our religions have had for a long time. Now, some people don't understand it, so it looks very weird, and that's okay. I got over looking weird a long time ago. <laughs> but, but it's been with us forever and we naturally communicate in this way. What I find happens most often is when people experience it, they have a remembering of home and it feels familiar. And many people say, I remember doing something like that when I was a child. Children naturally resonate in a theta brainwave state throughout different parts of their evolution and then into alpha and then into a beta state. So when they are in that very connective state, they often have past life memories very easily and vividly. And they often are able to communicate with light language. So it's something that's very natural to us and has a, a context 
that we are just now opening up to more. But it's always been there. When I was writing my book, um, I was shown the connection to light language and our sacred languages, or our older languages. That they are um, often very sound-based. So I use the example of a leaf which takes in the light. It also provides the tree or the plant with life, and yet we call it a leaf. So these three words have that similar sound that shows that connection between their functionality. So even the sound starts to create a resonance. And all of our languages are resonance based. As you probably know, any sound can be created into shape. And the study of cymatics, which this picture is a colorized version of what you would see with the study of cymatics, that Hans Jenny would put the sand on a drum and then allow different frequencies to flow, and it would change the shape of the sand. This same thing happens with our own resonance. And now there's been so many different studies of this. A very famous one is Dr. Emoto's work. I know you're familiar with this, where you flow energy and intent and words to the water, and it changes the shape. So the shape of love, the shape of thank you, and of course the shape of I hate you. So we get to see the resonance in very specific ways. We get to know how gratitude and love affects the 70% water that's within us and how hatred and separation affects the 70% water in us. And this is one of the exciting things about light language. Because it is heart-centered, we are naturally communicating the information of love and healing. So it is just another form of allowing more of that, whoops, wrong button. It's another form of allowing more of that resonance to flow. Now, that shape is something that I was taught from my guides and then later had to come across the information that would help support that, like Dr. Emoto's work. So this is actually a channeling from Metatron that the frequency of the light language creates the geometries that are needed spatially in a person's light body. That is part of how it bypasses our mental constructs. Because you don't have to mentally understand and decide, can I love that much? Can I forgive that? Your higher self allows it to communicate directly with you in the way that is perfect for you. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the science behind that. I want to tell you a little bit about my story and how I opened up to it. Because I think it is wonderful that we all have different ways of opening. And for me personally, I was not psychic all of my life. I look at my story as actually rather unremarkable. That it, it seemed to unfold in a very gentle way. Because I was not a psychic child, I was a very sensitive child. But I had to shut down my sensitivity in order to survive in a very dysfunctional and harsh environment. So the emotions 
and the mental experiences around me were very difficult for me to deal with. So I shut down that, that empathy until it began naturally opening up in my later years. When I looked back at my opening, it actually began in 1987, when I was 17. Shocking, I know, I still look 17. <laughs> <laughs> it began when I was 17, which was actually a time of the harmonic convergence, which I had no clue about whatsoever at the time. And it started very slowly where I could not control it. But I would get these thought patterns that were something that would come in so strongly and so clearly, but it would be proven within a few hours. And it was something that was so random that I couldn't have just imagined that. It was proof for me that there was something else going on. Sometimes I would be driving to another state and I would get this thought in my head that someone that I hadn't seen for six years, that I barely knew, was going to be at this random place that I was hours away from my home. And there they would be. So it started happening like that, where it was quick flashes, and they would be proven, but I couldn't control it. Then I had another big opening, and it was around the time of Halley's Comet, where I started seeing people's auras. I started seeing that they would connect if they were someone that was family or something, sometimes from the lower chakras. But my senses were opening up, and I didn't really have a context for it. The other thing that was happening was I recognized that I would kind of zone out, almost go unconscious, okay. but I was still awake. And I would kind of come back to, back into focus, and I would be hearing this conversation that I was having in my head. And as I would become conscious, I would be like, wow, that is so weird. Why am I thinking about the healing properties of the color green? At that time, I knew nothing about chakras. I didn't know about the healing power of colors, or even that energy healing was something that was possible. I was just having these experiences with no context for what was occurring. Over time, I started recognizing that I was getting impulses, I was getting messages from my non-physical guides. And it began to become more conscious to me when I woke up sick one day and I had the impulse to run my hand over my body and I would feel this and see in my mind's eye this heat and this gray energy leaving my body and going into my hand. And then I would kind of empty my hand out just assuming it was getting full like a trash can and within a few hours, I actually felt fine. So I started sneaking that on my friends and family whenever they were feeling badly, and they would get better too. So it started opening up very slowly and in a really wonderful way. Then in the early 2000s, around 2002, I was already starting to work on my friends and family and occasionally clients. And at the end of that year, I had an axiotonal alignment done. And after that process was when light language started naturally occurring. So when I was working on someone, my hand would start to move. My whole body would start to shake. And then it got bigger and faster and faster. And by this point, I was accustomed to talking to my guides about what was occurring for the person. What was I to do for that healing process? And as this movement started naturally happening, I just observed. And sometimes they would tell me what was occurring, but I was asking them, what is this? What's happening? And every once in a while, they would give me a cryptic answer, just an odd answer. Like, there's this many people on Earth that do this and that number would go up and down. And I had no reference for light language at the time. And I spent about a year and a half working on people, allowing that to occur, which was really fun, 
Their eyes were closed. My hands were moving around. They were having wonderful experiences. This was a lot of fun. I was good with that. Until the sound started wanting to come out. I was not good with that. So I would keep the sound in, and I would have to hold my mouth shut really tightly. And if I went to an event like this, I now had to sit in the back because my hands wanted to fly all around. And so I would sit on my hands in the back and just twitch. <laughs> and I'm thinking, whoa, my life has taken a very weird turn. <laughs> I had no idea this is what I signed up for, <laughs> to become the weird twitching lady in the back. <laughs> but when I was experiencing the healing, it felt so good. It was so blissful. And I could feel this expansion occurring. And I could see an expansion occurring for my clients. So finally one day, I sat down to meditate. And I said to the universe, I want clear, clear guidance of what to do next. I got it, but you should be careful what you ask for. <laughs> They said, we want you to channel in this specific place, within this specific time. And I'm fine to do that. I'm an Aries, so I'll usually try anything once. So I prepared, and the day was coming close. And my guide said, bring your pillow. You're going to do darshan. And I didn't know what darshan was. I probably should have Googled it. <laughs> but they showed me placing my hands very specifically on someone's body. And I was fine with that. So the day came and there was about 15 people, clients, friends of clients, friends of mine. And the very first person that came up is a dear friend of mine that I lovingly call a squirrel on speed. She is very excited. She was so excited, she called me up earlier, and she's like, I can't wait. I'm gonna work on this, I'm gonna work on this, and I was gonna work on that, but then I realized this is the core issue, so I'm gonna work on that. But much faster, but I don't want your translator to pass out. <laughs> so she came up first, and I could see my finger going in slow motion to touch her. And as soon as it did, La, la, light language came bursting out so loud and so strongly that she immediately started laughing and could not stop. So I've got someone dying laughing at me, the first person, and also it makes a child in the room cry. So here I am, my first time coming out with light language, and I've got someone laughing and a child crying. I'm like, oh my goodness, no one else is going to come here for this. <laughs> but they did, and it was a lovely experience. And everybody came up, and afterwards, we shared what we were experiencing. And one of my clients came to me, and he said, I want a session on Monday, two days later. So he came for the session. And when it was time to do the energy healing, I could hear it in my head, but I was holding my mouth shut. And at that point, my guide said to me very clearly, it's okay, you can hold it in. It'll just take him longer to heal. Not because light language is the only way to heal, but because I was holding something back and I had been nurtured so lovingly and so gently through that opening, and now I was at a choice point. Hold this in, or open up and let it flow. And I thought about that. Here I have someone sitting in front of me. All he wants to do is heal. It even made his own child cry, and he still wanted more. But I was embarrassed. And I couldn't do that. I couldn't hold it back knowing I could have helped, but I was too embarrassed. So I let it flow. 
and I've never held it back since. Now I get to live a pretty normal life. I go to the grocery store, it only rarely happens. <laughs> and it happens in ways that are conducive to the environment. I don't even have to sit in the back and sit on my hands and twitch. The energy, now that I'm not holding it back, it respects the environment. And it comes in ways that people can accept it, it may still push us past our comfort zone, but it's appropriate for now as we no longer hold back things that are very natural to us. And the feedback that I've received from others that felt that same kind of embarrassment and fear has really made it worse coming out about this. Because it may look weird, but as you know, weird is becoming the new normal. <laughs> So I want to do some light language for you. And I want you to look at what you're noticing. What are you feeling physically? Do you feel any tingling sensations? Maybe your heart or your throat. Any hot or cold sensations? Do you notice any emotions surfacing? Maybe a sense of peace? Or even a little bit of anxiety, which leaves and becomes peace? Are you noticing any thoughts? Like maybe an odd random thought from something when you were younger? Or are you noticing any psychic senses? Like seeing colors, or sensing an origin, or sensing a meaning? So in essence, feel it. Use your whole sensory system. Because this is part of your multidimensional communication. You experience things physically, mentally, emotionally, and intuitively. So rather than worrying about what is she saying, think of it more broadly. What is being conveyed? What am I sensing? Because it's your higher self that's activating the encodements for you. I'm not doing something to you. I'm allowing the energy to flow, and then you will utilize what you need through your higher self. So this written transmission, this also is a Lyran Pleiadian language that comes through me quite often. And this particular transmission, I'm only going to give you a little of the information because I want you to sense it. But this particular transmission is helping to open the heart in very practical ways so that it becomes part of what you're living. So I welcome you to close your eyes and have your own journey. Or you can even look at me and look at how weird I look because I don't mind that at all. But notice what you're sensing because it is your unique experience. So everyone take a nice, deep, and relaxing breath. Kat sarash dairo masak teru at desesenum. Jan saru mas dairo satitat ilu kuarat. Kande surusat irush dairo masak lelo uat saimbach. Zenet tek toro kat dero uat sairash tel no ua. Ta ya sant uramek ukua. Kombat ira sairush daratat ilal. Chonom saru mak ero. Kon saru mashteru set dieru ur tet alal in emsot eshteru mak ikiruma. Peru tetai soro stada sereklel ur chet nit surumet ukua. Tet snit irukmet dia susaru tetaramat ilal. Ta, ta, hua. Jut sonomasek ur karukastai rotat il. Janom saru mashtai rusak tira hat in atsi rua. Kon daru met il sheru masak mehot an. Tanatairu te sesteru mesukua, shet urothos elel yama, kombarat in jerosant rokmat des ua, sirut tataila ama, chono sok maru met ul ke, tatsa hama cheru mats, son, son, tokurku, urku, tito urach, tito tatane eko, kongore tito tatas, urmako ket, uru, tetia, 
Hotter, Tanat atai rumat el et cheruma set ni kero, konde rumat des ratat er tatet nem o. Ka kura ka, hoed tatet shutsem. Humat te je, ho kareket doma. Hoed erere shturma sadaret unotot et, de kron et et ot seret unamat et ot, rek eronat der ut derot uma. Panet tets o. What's Good, taking another deep breath. I wanna share a little of what I was experiencing. Perhaps it will validate some of the things you were experiencing. But your experience can be different because your higher self is activating the encodements for you. Part of what I was noticing in the beginning was a, a transference of information that was talking to you very directly about how your embodiment is changing the experience that we are going through now. And I was seeing a lot of crown chakra activation. I was seeing a lot of third eye and third chakra activation during that part as well. Um, the energy shifted and it became very much about releasing uh, energies from the heart and energies from the throat chakra that are blocking our connection, communication, and manifestation. So in essence, it was like helping to clear the vessel and prepare the vessel for more of that embodiment. Um, then the energy shifted again, and uh, during that last part, there was so much going on that I wasn't aware and able to maintain what was occurring because the, the information was just too vast, so it doesn't always translate directly. Um, and that uh, the energies to me were very galactic. You also can have a different experience with that because your resonance will um, attune to what part of it is valuable for you. Um, but part of that energy was a, um, a, a very direct connection that I have that uh, works through my whole body. So sometimes you'll see my feet moving because I'm a full body channel that they use the whole system. So all that's conveying is helping to shape the energy so that you have the maximum benefit. Good. So I wanna go back to science just a little bit. I love this part. Um, why we call it the language of light. It is, uh, we certainly could use the same terminology that has been used before, but what we are actually doing is blending science and spirituality. So in essence, we are taking it out of the religious context 
which has been a, a wonderful container to maintain that connection. But we are expanding beyond that and helping to tune it in to more of a blend of science and spirituality. So language is just information. That is all that it is. We have body language. We have verbal language. We have all kinds of ways that we are already communicating. And that is all language is, is a flow of information. But light is something that we are expanding our own understanding of. It exhibits both wave and particle properties. I see it as a carrier vehicle of information or a response to consciousness. So I was shown a vision where I was shown absolute blackness, like the, the vacuum of space. And then I was shown a consciousness affecting that vacuum. And because of that, it creates a ripple or a spiral of flow that as we attune to certain parts of it, we observe that as light. We could also observe it as color. We could hear it as sound. Or we could experience it as shape, a resonance. So light language is helping to bring that deeper scientific understanding into this, that wave and particle form. So I want to talk just a little bit more about that with something that you're probably very familiar with, the double slit experience, experiment, or the observer effect, the effect of consciousness on matter. So all of information is vibration. We know this. And when I transmit light language, it comes out in that malleable wave state. And then your uniqueness creates the particle form based on your needs, your density, and your resonance. So you are the observer effect that takes that waveform, which is vast information and highly malleable, and you create the particle form. I need to release this from my childhood. I need to release this from a past life. Someone else needs to release something different. So you are what creates that specific information. This is why that energy of connection is coming up so much. Because life thrives in diversity. Your uniqueness is necessary to life. All that you are perceiving, all that you are experiencing is a flow of information that changes life. That's why this time is about opening up to more of our vast communication so that those that are love-based own that power and start actively shaping the world around them. Love will never manipulate. It will magnetize and it will help create more expansion. And this is what we are doing and part of what light language helps us to access is that vastness, that infinite nature that's within each of us so that we are boldly flowing our information into the world instead of just watching it and reacting, that we are letting our love flow into it and owning that power that is in, within us. This is one of the first pictures of wave and particle form of light. So you can see that it has the spectrum within it. That's our visible spectrum. So the exciting part is why is this happening now? What does it really indicate for our evolution? It is that app opportunity for us to start to blend that mind and the heart so that you start really knowing deeply within that you have access to wisdom that is infinite. That you start knowing the capability and embodying that here on a much deeper level. The things that you've known in your heart, they become more part of your experience. 
as you are starting to communicate more multidimensionally. That wisdom unfolds from within you. Now, you may be familiar with the Keys of Enoch from J.J. Hertog. Um, to the best of my understanding, this is where the term light language became very popular. So he originally wrote this book in the 70s, and that brought the terminology of the language of light more into the mainstream. Still very fringe. But his quote, which is beautifully mind-boggling, light language is the instant communication with the infinite mind. This it codes knowledge. This allows man to have communion with other planets of intelligence through the super holographic process. This super holographic process, that is part of our reality. That is what our brain defines. This linearizes. So from that holographic process, your brain makes all of that linear and separate. But that connection is deeply within it. This is the universal scaling law. How many of you have heard of Nassim Haramein, Elizabeth Rauscher? Yeah, so they are physicists that have found the math to back up some of the crazy stuff that, <laughs> that I talk about. <laughs> because I can't do the math. Uh, so the universal scaling law, they found the ratio that everything falls along this line, whether it's a proton or a nebula, something extremely small that we can't see it, or something so huge that we could see it through space. They all have the same ratio. I was taught this by my non-physical guides with the subatomic structure. That in the subatomic model, it is 1% matter and 99% space. Even though it's too small for us to see, it is 1% matter. And my non-physical guides have said that same ratio applies to everything. We are 1% physicality. We are 99% subtle energy, the higher self. Even our interactions, our energetic boundaries that determine what we experience. They are 1% action, you say yes or you say no, and they are 99% your subtle information, your unconscious beliefs. That's why this time of ascension is all about creating more clarity within you so that you are interacting more consciously rather than the unconscious fears and insecurity leading which is what we see so much of in the world. So this universal scaling law also applies to light language. When I bring through a transmission, I am bringing through 99% vast, subtle information, and you make that 1% specific to you. That dynamic flow of energy and information that you are interpreting with your brilliant uniqueness. So the fractal is you, and you are also the whole. You have connection to everything. This is why light language is opening up so much right now, because we are able to tap in to that unified consciousness. We are able to tap in to that nonlinear information. Within you, you contain all of that information, just like the hologram. So you can cut it in half, and you have the full picture on both halves. All of that is within you as well. You have access to infinite, universal information. It's just a matter of tuning in to more of your non-linear communication and letting that become more conscious to you. This is a really cool video that doesn't work. <laughs> it 
It is showing that fractal moving. So a little bit about ascension. All that you are doing is raising your vibration into more of an attunement with the love that you naturally are. And love does take boundaries. It takes courage. Currently, you can't just say yes to everything. You have to lock your doors and make choices. Does this feel healthy for me? Am I needing to take a risk that I'm not taking? Or am I needing to say no to something that might be uncomfortable, but it's the healthier choice? That's the courage of love, that it will say yes or it will say no based on the greater good of the moment. And that's what we are doing. We are moving into more of a flow of connection, which is the nature of love. We are pulling more of a conscious focus from that 99% invisible information. It's always available to us. That is the subtle realm interaction. We've been doing it unconsciously, and now we're doing that more consciously, where we are choosing more love. We are choosing more connection, and we are focusing ourselves to perceive the positive potentials when what may be obvious in the world is very challenging. We are starting to communicate more in our vibration. This is one of the effects that I noticed when I had the axiotonal alignment done in the early 2000s. I was doing massage at the time, and as that integrated, I started noticing that even when I wasn't trying, my clients were having bigger healings from the massage because energy was naturally flowing from me. We are communicating more in vibration. We are communicating more in multilinear ways. This evolution of connection helps move us from manipulation. Manipulation is not a bad thing in and of itself. When you are in the physical realm, you must interact with the physical realm in order to create. So in essence, you manipulate your environment. And that's a wonderful thing when you make life more beautiful. But of course, we know there's lots of greed and deception along with manipulation. That's why pulling that unconscious information into your consciousness and connecting that with your heart is what this evolution is about. I got to see this firsthand after I had already opened up and I was still working in the corporate. I would go to a meeting and my guides, as I was walking to the meeting, they would say to me, you can't manipulate. And I would have this conversation. I'm like, are you kidding? This is business. You know what's gonna go on in there? And they said, you cannot manipulate. Watch, there is always another way. I could not believe the things that I saw occur. It's not like I was the leader of the group either. Sometimes I was the lowest, sometimes I was somewhere in the middle. But the flow of information and how you could connect with people and use that to create a win-win. Those are the laws of nature, mutually beneficial because we are all connected. There's always a way past manipulation and greed. It may not happen all at once, but you're the ones that embody that and you communicate that through your own actions, your own vibration. That is the core of your intent. When you have the intent for a win-win, it may take a little bit of time to manifest in the physical realm, but that's the potential that you are creating, that your intent flows more strongly into the room, that love becomes the stronger currency rather than greed or manipulation. 
And it's you that's embodying that. That your inner wisdom starts to flow. When they said, watch, there's always another way. I didn't know how to do that in my mind. I didn't know how that was going to occur. I was aware of all the manipulation. But as I observed, answers would flow. It's not linear, so you discover it along the way. That's that inner wisdom flowing out. Because you have access into that infinite information, that 99% subtle realm that's part of you. This personal communion with life is an important aspect of this. I used to teach about this in class, and I'm so surprised at how quickly it has moved. Because the internet has brought a deep connection with us. But it has also brought an interesting challenge that we must discern for ourselves what's true and what's not true. And now fake news is all around. But this is part of our empowerment. It's not that we don't observe facts. We look deeper into the reality and we observe potentials. We utilize our full telepathic communication to discern what's healthy for me and what's not. Where do I need to put up boundaries? Where do I need to open and take more risks? That your personal communion with life is expanding. And as you allow that intent to flow, you start affecting the energy around you more strongly. Your resonance is always the key. It's your resonance that changed things. There's a quote from the Bible, the meek inheriting the earth. The meek are not weak. They are those that have such strong love within that they do not interact with fear and greed and manipulation that they know there's always another way. There is always a way to connect with someone. There is always a way to let love become the strongest energy in the room. And that's you. You are the love that this earth has been waiting for. That power to come through you and your inner wisdom to activate consciously because it's always been there. But it hasn't always been easy to hold that vibration here on earth. And now it's getting easier. You have more support. I'm gonna do one final transmission. Also about opening the heart. This one is a little more lighthearted and fun. That your joy and your love and your passion flows strongly into your life. So take a nice, deep, and relaxing breath. Noticing what you're sensing. Karumakatasayarustan, <laughs> Sanachan to Rayamak Aru Kant or yet no matzeru. San should have sent Rayamakum Taru ut dolo um. Tanatsai and Staru set irume hakaya okua. Son soromastairumat ir stairu et setzel nem. Men should have sent Rayamakairut tar as herald anu stairmatsukua. Yet so son shall massacairuma. Hansurasterumasakterohutnet, <laughs> Nen shur sant makaru at dal nam. That's what's on. That's
sutsana. Cha. Chana tsatseru ut torshtot utobat iruka. Dana tsaras tairu masit ilehan nom. Ganor mat edeshteru sektire het teresedeset durush tairu ma. Hua mat sairaka. Kona tsatseru tat iru ud nad rayat ukwal nam. Mand erushteru sektire het dirusit. Tel redeshtur masik tir nad. Honkaru mak airu ta. Hennyot shön surmat irekara tajer att leli in. Ennet num tako. Danu shön saruma. Taking another deep breath. Good. Even conveyed within the energy was a deep gratitude for all that we are doing, which is how I had intended to end this. Not only with a deep thank you for those that have invited me here, this is such an honor, but a true deep thank you to you, because it is you that is changing the world. It is your resonance and your love and your willingness to come together and amplify your energy that truly changes the world. So thank you for what you are doing. <laughs>